Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode. Uh, this is episode number 139 for November the 2nd, 2021. Wow, the year is going by fast, isn't it? In spite of COVID. And we're moving into the Christmas season, so I hope you've been busy getting ready for that, making your Christmas presents. I'm well ahead of the game because I started in August. So, and I've shown you some of those things. So I'm going to show you some more things today that have to do with Christmas. And the first thing I want to show you is a Hoop Sisters pattern for making Christmas placemats on your embroidery machine. Now, Hoop Sisters has been around for years. I've watched some of their videos. They're on YouTube and they have all of these uh, files that you can buy and put onto your embroidery machine that will make placemats and table runners and... Um, you know, quilts and things like that. And I've always been kind of interested in trying one of their designs. The only problem is, if you want to do one of their quilts, it is quite pricey for the uh, files. I mean, first of all, it's in American dollars. So anything in American dollars for us Canadians is pricey. And that's just the files for your embroidery machine. That is not the supplies, your fabric, your batting, your backing, all of that kind of stuff. So one pattern I was looking at, I think was about $160, um, $168, I think it came out to Canadian just for the files alone. So I kind of put it off. Um, but when I was in Ultimate Sewing uh, a couple of weeks ago, I saw that uh, Shirley had some of the Hoop Sister patterns for smaller projects. And uh, one of them was for uh, Christmas placemats or, and or a um, Christmas wall hanging. And it was kind of interesting looking and there looked like there was a fair variety of things you could do with the pattern. It was $40 and I keep calling it a pattern, but what I mean is embroidery files. So I purchased, uh, that kit or wasn't a kit you know what I mean I purchased the files they were on a CD oh you know how long that one's been sitting around in the store right because most computers today don't come with a built-in CD or DVD player uh, in them luckily for me though because I have a lot of technology around my house and I have a graveyard of technology I have a standalone several standalone CD DVD players so not a problem because I have to take the patterns off the CD and put them on a USB uh, drive so I can plug them into my embroidery machine. So I did that and I was looking at the instructions. Now they come with very, very detailed instructions as well. Pages like a hundred and some, 200 some pages of instructions. I didn't print them all out. Um, I just looked at the basic instructions for the placemat and away I went should have read the instructions because I didn't realize it was a quilt as you go. I should have realized that when it's asking you to hoop batting. Okay, that would have been my first clue. But no, I went along my merry little way. Now it was only two blocks that you did in the in, in the embroidery hoop for these placemats. Um, but then you had to layer them together. So I did. But I had when I was putting my sashing on and my borders, of course, they didn't have any batting. And when if I put batting down on top of that, there would be a space. So I ended up MacGyvering it, if you know what that means, and I made it work. And so it did work. Um, then the next one, that was the first one I made. The second one that I made, I altered the way I made it so that it was no longer a quilt as you go kind of a thing it was more of a regular do the blocks then do the quilting and you're fine so here is my final product so i bought this pattern at ultimate sewing and uh, it's a hoop sisters pattern it's a in the hoop uh, pattern for making uh, wall hanging and placemats and it has a bunch of these uh, Christmas tree kind of things in them that you can mix and match around. Now I've never done a Hoop Sisters pattern before and I did not realize that this is actually a quilt as you go kind of project and I had some problems uh, with this as a result. Would have helped if I'd read the instructions through thoroughly but this does come with very detailed instructions like over a hundred pages of detailed instructions now a lot of those are set up as slides so there's a picture that's on an eight and a half by eleven in landscape 
uh, format. And so like 41 pages for doing a placemat and another 41 pages for doing a wall hanging and then a bunch of other uh, pages of information. So basically I started printing them all out and I thought, do I really need to print out the ones that have slides on them? And I decided not. Um, so I didn't really read through everything and real, so I didn't realize this was a quilt as you go. And that means that I had a little problem because I'd already laid down my batting, which is batalizer I was using for this, and put the backing on as well at the same time for each one of these individual blocks that you can see here. So this is a block and this is a block and with the two trees on each one. And so that meant when I added the sashing, this, and the borders around there, they didn't have any batting. So I kind of cut strips of batting to fit uh, those pieces. And then I put another layer of batting. Batalizer is what I'm using. Batalizer is a very dense type of batting. It's really great for placemats and table runners and things like that. And I put another layer on. So I have two layers of batalizer. And then I put on my backing. And then I did some stitch in the ditch quilting all the way around the edges. And some straight line here and some wavy foot uh, quilting there. And that holds the pieces together. And this is what it looks like on the back. And as you can see, I used a fairly light thread. So it doesn't really show up all that well. But it's there and it's holding everything together. And then, of course, I did my binding in the traditional manner. So this was the first one that I made where I had to do that um, doubling up on the battleizer. Now, it just makes it a little heavier, but a little bit more substantial. So this would serve both as a placemat or as a small table topper um, kind of a thing. And uh, so I made a second one, but I did not have exactly the same fabric, uh, enough of it, because I was making this from scraps, basically. Um, so I changed it and I'll show you what I changed it to. And here it is. So you can see this one and then this one. Now, this time I didn't bother to put the batting in the hoop for this and I didn't put the backing in the hoop either. I just did this like it was a regular applique, uh, freestanding applique kind of thing. Well, it's really not freestanding, but you know what I mean, applique uh, on tearaway stabilizer and then I added the battleizer and the backing. And to keep these two consistent, I used two layers of the battleizer, just as I had in the first one, so they're both about the same thickness. Um, of course, this one is using a slightly different uh, color scheme. But you want to know something? That would be fine as placemats, it would make it interesting. Um, and as table toppers, it doesn't really matter because you probably don't have them both on the same table. Uh, so. I have these two done and I am debating now if I'm going to make a third and a fourth one or if I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, there's other designs in this pattern. As I mentioned, you can see some of them here. And I am thinking I could do, they have a wall hanging right here, so you see. But I could do a mix and match and make my own thing uh, with this as well. So I don't know, I'm playing around with the idea and we'll see how that works out. But anyways, this was my first Hoop Sisters pattern, and um, I almost bought one that was a quilt, one that I kind of like, but it was a lot of money. It was about $170 for the pattern, and then you have your materials on top of that. But now I realize that basically they're doing quilt as you go, and I just don't like quilt as you go. So I think I'll hold off on that idea of buying one of their more substantial patterns for making a quilt. Now, I might try a wall hanging. I don't know. We'll see how time is going. Got a lot of projects on the go, as you're going to hear about soon. Um, but we'll see with that. Um, I might actually move myself away from a Christmas kind of thing and more into a, a winter kind of thing, because I think I could adapt the files that are in this particular program to do that. The other thing that I did was I finished my nephew's quilt that I'm giving to him for Christmas. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So I'm gonna show that to you right now. This was a mystery quilt that I did at a class at Ultimate Sewing just before COVID broke out. So it's been sitting around, the top has been done, 
for over two years, just waiting to be quilted. Um, I hesitated on quilting it because I was going to have to put it on my domestic machine and I was debating whether or not I was going to rent time on a long arm for this. But of course, you know that my problem has now been solved because I now own a long arm. So I got on with this quilt. Now this quilt is going to be a gift for my nephew and at Christmas time. And I did ask him what his favorite colors would it what were are and he said they're blue and so this one has a lot of blue in it it also has a lot of purple too as well um but let's take a look close up at the uh quilting i used a pantograph for this and so you can see it's a edge to edge design and i think it turned out pretty good now i am going to confess that there was a little tiny mistake with this quilt and it happened when i was on my very last row of this quilt uh and you can't see it, it was down in this area here but somehow i lost track of where i was on the pantograph and I doubled back over in one little section. Well, I stopped the machine and thought I would tear those stitches out, but they were kind of complicated, and it was on the very edge, and I knew I'd be trimming this quilt up to square it, so I left it. And between squaring it up and the binding, that mistake disappeared. But I did have another mistake, and I don't even think I can find it now, and I probably shouldn't be showing you my mistakes, but I am an idiot quilter and I do idiot things. And it's down in here, and I'm having a harder time finding it myself, which is a good thing. What happened was, I think it's this spot right here. Can I blow it up anymore? Well, no, I'm not even sure. But what happened was, in along this seam here, it pulled apart. Uh, it wasn't stitched properly. And I didn't realize that until I got to the end of the quilt. So I could have hand sewn it back together, but it was a very tiny spot, and I don't like hand sewing. I was afraid I'd get blood all over my quilt. So what did I do? Well, it's on the frame, it's on the long arm, so I just took the long arm and went over it with a small zigzag stitch and then some straight line stitching over top of that to kind of fill it in and made sure it was well secured and left it. Now, my initial thought was that what I would probably do was maybe I'd make a label because it was close to the center area of this bottom part. I think that's it there. Um, and I just stick a label over it, say something like... Uh, my nephew's name and you know his quilt or something like that but then you know eyes would be drawn to that part in the quilt and people might start to wonder why'd you put a label right there is are you trying to hide something well yes i am trying to hide something but uh when i got it all finished i got it bound and everything i really as right now i'm having difficulty finding that mistake and it looked okay on the back as well so I'm not going to worry about it. It's there. I just won't point it out to anybody. You're the only people that know now. So shh, don't say anything to my nephew. So anyways, I'm really pleased with this quilt. I think it looks great. And I really hope that he enjoys it. So what's coming up next? Lots of things. Lots and lots of things. I'm always busy, as you well know. First of all, I have on order from Peachtree Quilts out west. Um, some panels for doing some practice ruler foot quilting on. Now, if you saw us uh, so chatty, the last episode of it, Walter and I attempted to do some ruler foot qu uh, quilting on the long arm. Neither one of us really having any experience with that. I have a little bit more than Walter does because I've done some on my domestic machine. But nevertheless, we needed something to practice on. And Walter had a couple of old uh, Christmas panels that he actually bought by accident a few years ago um, at Ultimate Sewing. He bought them in a sort of a, a remnant uh, bin of things and he didn't really realize that they were panels. Um, he thought it was just regular fabric. Um, so he's had these sitting around. Well, we thought get them out and we'll practice on those because they had little blocks, full blocks I would call them on it. And uh, so we did. But in the meantime, I did order four panels. They're all the same panel that actually look like a quilt. They're just printed various 
quilting blocks on you know a meter of fabric and uh, the idea here is that we'll I'll sandwich them together and we can use those as practice with ruler foot quilting so they have not arrived yet actually I thought they'd arrive before today's video but they have not I think they're taking the slow route to get from uh, Saskatchewan uh, yes yeah, from Saskatchewan where they're located out in Regina I believe uh, to get here but then that's Canada Post for you right so anyways, I'll show them to you when they do arrive. The other thing that I've got coming up is today. Um, this afternoon, I am going to a physical quilting class. We're doing a Lone Star. I've had, I signed up and paid for this class just before COVID started. So almost two years ago. And now Shirley has decided that she's going to have in-store classes again. Now she's doing it with restrictions. Um, only six people in the class. Uh, everybody has to be masked. I did ask her if she was going to require proof that everybody had been double vaxxed. She was a little up in the air about that, and I can understand why. Our government has not given uh, stores like Shirley's any direct guidelines. They've left it up to them, the store owner. And, you know, it's a slippery slope. And I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I'm a little nervous about taking this class today. Um... I think it'll be okay. I imagine everybody will be double vaxxed because, you know, the people who take classes at Ultimate Sewing are usually regulars, customers there. And they're a conscientious group. They're an older crowd. So, you know, um, a lot of the older people, and when I say older people, I mean myself as well, okay? Um, you know, they got double vaxxed early um, because you get older, your health isn't what it should you know, it was when you were 20. So I am going to ask a question though when I get in there with the others. I'm just going to say as nicely and unaccusatory as I can. Unaccusatory, is that a word? Uh, as I can, but you know, basically uh, just assuming everybody's been double vaxxed, right? Now, if I get one in there though, who says no or hesitates or whatever, then I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I stay or do I go? Because just because you're double vaxxed doesn't mean you can't still get COVID, right? You just maybe not get it as severely as you could if you weren't vaxxed. So, you know, I don't want to sit in a class and through all the class being apprehensive about, you know, am I going to contract something here? Uh, it's just not going to make it a really nice experience for me. So we'll see. But I am kind of looking forward to it. I'm a little nervous, not just because of COVID. It's been two years since I've taken a class. And I loved taking classes. Because, you know, classes can be social and you learn something. And in this particular class, you're doing a Lone Star. And I've always wanted to do a Lone Star. And this Lone Star does have Y seams. And yes, I know there are patterns out there that you can get that do not have Y seams for doing a Lone Star. But... I want to learn how to do Y seams. Now, I have taught myself by watching YouTube videos how to do Y seams. I've done them before. I haven't done them recently, so I need a refresher on the methodology behind it. Um, but Sharon, who's the instructor for this, she's an excellent instructor. And I know that uh, I will get, you know, great instructions on how to do Y seams. So that's the other reason why I want to take this class. So yesterday I had to get all my stuff together for the class. It's been a long time. I had to really sit there and think about what I need to take with me to a class. Now, I always overpack for classes. I always think of, well, what if, and, you know, throw that item in as well. So I have everything organized, but now I'm second guessing the pattern itself. We weren't actually given a pattern we were given the basic requirements of fabric. And this is done with strips. So we were told we needed a fabric A and a fabric B in two and a half inch width of fabric strips. So I had bought several different strip packs and jelly rolls trying to decide what colors would work. And at the time I was purchasing these, I was buying them at Ultimate Sewing and there wasn't a great selection available at that point in time for color schemes. So I did pick a color scheme, but now I'm second guessing it. I woke up this morning at five o'clock in the morning, second guessing my color scheme. So after I have this video all put together, 
I'm going to go back through those and check my supplies again and see if there's a better combination that I can come up with, which might mean I'm going to have to cut some two and a half inch strips from yardage. Um, I was trying to avoid that. I mean, that's not a hard thing to do, but yeah, I just, I just don't know if I'm really happy with the color scheme I've picked. It's a little radical. I'll give you a hint. It's blue and it's a gray, a light gray. Mm, not so sure about that. And a white background. But the way it goes together, it looks like a bunch of little diamonds in each point. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to get in there, get into the class and decide as I start working on it. No, nope, don't like these colors and have to, you know, back up to pick the right colors and that'll get me behind in the class. So, yeah. Okay, what else am I working on? Well, I've got all the pieces cut for this. I just haven't started sewing them together. But, you know, and I don't know if I'm going to get it together uh, because I'll be working on the Lone Star. So maybe working on two quilts at the same time? Possibility. We'll see. It can be done. But this is the one. I showed you this pattern a week or so ago. Um, it's a fall pattern. I do really like it. Those are, you can see, steam engines and I bought all the fabric to go with this and uh, it's just a small uh, little more of a wall hanging than or a little lap quilt but uh, as I said I've got all the pieces cut out and ready to go and I discovered the other day I was taking down my Halloween decorations in my living room my family room yesterday and um, I had kind of forgot that I don't really have a lot of fall things. I was looking through my quilts and, and table runners and things, and I don't really have any that are fall-like. Um, I thought I did, but I don't. So close as I have were my Halloween ones. Well, I'm not using my Halloween ones. Those, those were already up. So um, I've left the Halloween quilt I made on the back of the couch still i really like that quilt and so and it's kind of got fallish colors in it so it sits there but i would like something more fall like so maybe this one that i'm working on maybe this pattern will be it but will i get it done before fall is over and then we're into winter well we'll be into christmas in a month's time i'll be thinking of my christmas decorations because i always decorate on december the first or thereabouts um, and I have lots of Christmas quilts and things tucked away in my uh, uh, space where I put my Christmas decorations. So, yeah, we'll see. But anyways, the pieces are all cut for this, ready to go. I just have to get on with it. And what else is coming up this week? Well, <laughs> two more events, okay? First of all, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the first Wednesday of November. Craft and Chat. You've heard me talk about it a lot before. Uh, it's a Zoom, virtual Zoom, little sewing session, three hours, starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, runs till 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All are welcome. Zoom links are in the show notes below. Um, hope you can join us. I usually have some regulars who come out every time we have this, and that's a lot of fun, but we are certainly a welcoming group. All are welcome. And you don't have to quilt or sew. You could be crafting, paper crafting. We have uh, one member or one person, they're not members, it's informal, uh, who she isn't a quilter. She does paper crafting and beautiful things as well. And so we share what we're working on and we just work, we talk. Uh, it's very relaxing, no drama, and just have a good time. And it's always inspiring. I always learn something and I get a lot of things done as well so i'm looking forward to that uh tomorrow so as i said tomorrow november the 3rd 2021 in case this is being watched sometime in the next century <laughs> yeah right and um so as i said come and go as you please you don't have to be there right at one and you don't have to stay till four no one's going to hold you to that so okay so that's one of it what else is happening is at the end of this week on Friday night is the official kickoff for Energize 4.0. Now, Energize 4.0 is a, a retreat that Kim Jamison Hurst of The Quilter's Way, which is my uh, online membership group that I belong to, and you've heard me talk about that many times, uh, is holding a retreat for the weekend. 
And on the Friday night, she has a Zoom virtual cocktail party to kick things off. And I think there's a theme, and I don't think I have anything appropriate for it, for costume. I'll have to think about it, get Walter working on it. Uh, it's rock and roll. So, I mean, almost anything could go. <laughs> I'm thinking of just taking some an old tie and <laughs> tying it around my head and let it hang down, put on some beads. Hey, I think I will do that. That's kind of rock and rollish, isn't it? I don't know. Um, or kind of 80s or 70s look. Uh, so anyways, that gets kicked off and then it's Saturday and Sunday and it's always fun and I always get a lot done in one of those because it is a retreat. And plus Kim has special presentations and presenters and things like that. Um, I don't know if there's any prizes. She didn't say. There might be um, with it, but it's fun. So anyways, unfortunately, unless you remember the Quilter's Way, you can't be part of it. So you might want to consider joining the Quilter's Way just for Energize alone because it is great. Okay, so busy, busy week this week. All right, so that takes me to demos or things that, you know, I want to show you. And this is fantastic. Bath trays are just not for the bath anymore. And I'm going to show you what I mean. This is probably a very strange place to find a bath tray sitting on my long arm. But this is something that I saw on one of the videos by Tracy Russell from Whirls and Swirls. And she uses it when she's doing ruler foot quilting or whatever, set up for uh, a quilting session. And it expands so you can extend it across two of the rollers on your long arm and you can put things in it. And I thought this was a brilliant idea. In fact, while I was watching her video, it was a live video, and she showed this, I immediately went right onto Amazon and ordered one for myself. And my idea here is, is when I'm doing ruler foot quilting, like you probably saw uh, last week in So Chatty, I can put my rulers all in here and they're very handy to me. I can put my scissors, uh, my tweezers, which right now sit on top of my long arm, but anything else that I might need. I think it's a great idea. And I have another idea for this as well. You see, you can buy these fairly expensive little apparatus pieces that do the same thing, except they're a flat piece of plexiglass. And the idea is you can put a design, a drawn out or traced out or stenciled out design on top of that, mount your laser light from the back of the machine to this pole on the top, which is actually what that pole is meant for, uh, but everybody uses it to hang their scissors on. And you can point it down on your pattern that's sitting on this plexiglass tray. And basically like you do with a pantograph, except you're doing it for a single block, just uh, trace using the laser light your pattern. Now I haven't tried this yet, but you can do that. But I'm thinking, why invest $200 in this plexiglass tray, which I might do someday, when I could probably use this. All I need to do is take something flat laid across this little tray and bang, I've got a uh, platform for doing a, a laser light uh, tracing. So yeah, I think this is gonna have a lot of potential here. So this is a brilliant idea. Thanks, Tracy. And so, you know, if you really think about it, one of those kind of bath trays, I think I could find uses for that in my sewing room as well. Gotta think about that, but just never thought about it before. Well, I'm not the kind of person that takes a bath. I'm a shower guy. So, okay, where does that take us? That might have been too much information. Um, subscribers Quilt of the Week. Well, we have seen work from this individual before. His name is Doug, and he's from Australia. I call him Doug from Oz. Um, I don't know what Doug's last name is. Um, I've asked him a couple of times to, you know, tell me what it is, but he ignores those emails. So, I don't know, I guess protecting his privacy and that's okay. Um, so Doug has, does a lot of in machine embroidery, uh, very elaborate machine embroidery. And so he sent me pictures of his latest creation. So I'm gonna share that with you. This week's subscribers quilt comes from Doug, who's from Australia. I'm not sure what Doug's last name is. I've asked him a couple of times to send it to me, but he hasn't. So. Anyways, it doesn't matter. We'll just call him Doug from Oz. And we've seen some of his work before. And he and his wife are both 
right into machine embroidery and they do some very fine and detailed work and this is another example of the kind of work that he's doing now doug says hi stephen have finished the zoo embroidery wall hanging we'll have to find a picture frame kit to complete it the complete stitch count is 875,000 stitches it's made up of six panels and you shift it along the hoop for each file and use the hoop grid insert to place each of the panels in place. The top is done first and lower lays over it. The average panel took about six hours to stitch out. Did a panel a day. It measures 40 inches by 14 inches. The design came from Amazing Designs. I don't know if it's still available. Well, Doug, this is extremely detailed and, and very, very nice. Um, wow. Uh, six hours per panel and you had to move it along that must have taken you well you said you did one a day so this is a really nice example of what can be done with machine embroidery the detail is incredible and so is your patience for doing something like that a very ambitious project but thanks Doug for showing this to us it's absolutely gorgeous And that takes us to the YouTube channel of the week, which is not a new YouTube channel. In fact, I'm not even going to talk about the YouTube channel. What I'm going to focus on is one of their latest videos. I'm talking about Missouri Star Quilt Company. And if you don't know who they are and you're in the quilting world, then you've been living under a blanket, okay, for quite a while. Um, Missouri Star Quilt has weekly tutorials and actually they do several videos in a week and they're all good everybody knows jenny doan the owner of missouri star quilt company um just a, just a wonderful person she seems to be and people who've met her in real life say she is as well but she has every year uh just before christmas several months before christmas she puts out a whole bunch of christmas gift ideas from their store and so she's done a video um, showing what she has to reveal. And so I thought I would look at one little part of that video because there was something there that really appealed to me. This week's YouTube channel is actually not a YouTube channel per se, um, because to be honest, I'm starting to run out of channels to review. When I come across a new one that I like, though, I will be sure to review it for you. But in the meantime, I thought I'd point something out to you. Now, if you're a regular watcher of Missouri Star Quilt's uh, YouTube channel, you will have uh, seen this already. But every year they come out with a bunch of special gift ideas for Christmas. And they have a lot of custom made type of things. And if you're in love with Missouri Star Quilt or the person you might be giving a gift to is in love with Missouri Star Quilt, then this is something you might want to look into. Um, on this particular video that just came out about a week ago, uh, they were showcasing some of their very customized uh, items from their store and one of them that I thought was really cute was uh, the model of their main quilt store and I'm just going to show you here uh, what this is all about and then I, this one is so cool Mr. So, Mr. Ron is going to so die over this. Yes. He has a huge village of all kinds of things. And he's looked for years for a quilt shop. And then to have our own. Our very own Missouri Star Shop. So this is, yeah. this is our main shop here in Hamilton. And it's, um, I believe it's to 124th scale. I found someone leaked this online and people were like very uh, excited, but wondering uh -huh. what, like what size scale it was. So. Oh, I don't so that's a really cute idea and they mentioned that uh, jenny doan's husband uh, has a village of all those kind of little houses and things um and actually i know what he's talking about because i have the same kind of thing and i've had it for years now i thought this would probably be quite expensive because i assumed it was probably made in ceramic but it's not it's resin which means basically it's plastic so it's very affordable if you want to give it to somebody for something just a little different at christmas time it's made from resin and essentially resin is a form of of a plastic i think it retailed for 29.99 and at the time that i made this video i checked it out on their website and they didn't have any available but i'm assuming that they're getting more of them in before Christmas. 
I imagine it's a pretty hot selling item. So if you uh, want to check out some of the other things that they have for Christmas this year, then you'll find the link in the show notes below. So yeah, if you're looking for some Christmas I well, Christmas gift ideas for quilters, that might be a place to start. Okay, um, so that takes me to what's on my vision board this week. Um, this is a pattern by Doug Lico. I think that's how you say his last name, L-E-K-O, uh, for uh, Atler, Antler, Antler Quilt Designs. Now, I showed you last week one of his patterns that I purchased um, that I want to do eventually. But because I signed up for the newsletter for uh, Antler I have to keep quiet. Antler Quilt Designs. Why am I having trouble saying that? I don't know. Antler Quilt Designs. Um, they send you a free, well, a link to a free downloadable pattern. And this is the pattern. Highway 2. Now, at first glance, I wasn't that impressed with it. But then I got thinking about it. Um, well, I did a little video explaining what I'm thinking about. So let me put that in here. The quilt from my vision board this week, the pattern, is one that is called Highway 2. And this is a free pattern. And last week, I showed you one from the same company, Antler Quilt Designs by Doug uh, Lico. And uh, this is another one of his patterns. Now, all you have to do is sign up for their newsletter, and the pattern is yours free. And I did sign up for the newsletter, and I did receive this free pattern. Uh, it comes via your email, and it's a PDF file. Um, it's a very interesting looking quilt. Now, personally, I am not in love with the design of this in terms of the fabric that was used, but I see a great deal of potential here to do some fussy cutting and incorporating this into the quilt with colors of your choice um, that would make the fussy cuts really stand out. So if you have a really um, nice piece of patterned fabric that you know you you don't want to really cut up into smaller chunks uh, because you want to see the design then this might be something that you would enjoy uh, making also if you want to customize it with say family pictures or something like that I see very easily how you could do that in this particular design best part of it it's absolutely free so you may want to go and get this one for yourself Okay, so usually now I would put in a teaser for this week's The Idiot Quilter Presents, an interview. And just like last week, I still don't have anybody to interview. So if you've noticed that there has not been an Idiot Quilter Presents episode in a couple of weeks, that's why. Do I need to say more? I've run out of people to interview. Nobody's volunteering. Sorry. So I am sort of thinking of changing that slightly and instead of doing an interview well i would still do an interview if someone would let me know they were interested in being interviewed um i would uh, maybe change it to something else maybe a more informal little short video session where i talk about things that i have discovered about the quilting world the sewing world things that are you know, making me ponder or things like that. I don't know. So it might be the Idiot Quilter Presents instead of interviews. The Idiot, Idiot Quilter Presents the inside of Stephen's brain. That could be scary. You might want to volunteer for an interview to avoid that. Just saying. Okay, so moving on to one of my creations that I'm going to critique. Now, although this is a little um, out of season... Uh, because this was a, a table runner I made for Canada Day, um, I still wanted to critique it. So here it goes. This week's quilt of mine that I wish to critique is actually not a quilt, but a table runner. And this is a bit of a mess. Yes, I know. It doesn't look maybe that bad to you, but to me, I can see all the mistakes in it. And that's why I'm critiquing it. What not to do when you make a table runner. Now, at first glance on this, and I'm sorry, the picture is not that great of it. You can see that basically I made it up from scraps. And this is was my own design out of my own head. And that's possibly where I went terribly wrong. And why I say that is because if you take a look 
at these stripes that are here, or these strips that are here, I try to uh, do something uh, that makes them look similar, but flipped. So you see, I flipped these ones around and my mathematics was completely off on this one. I uh, ended up having to add some coping strips to these pieces to get them to fit. And then I sort of offset them from the strip below and that really didn't work because things are very uneven in this. Now, speaking of uneven, if you take a look at my border pieces, when I made this table runner, what I did was I did the, what do they call that? The blanket or the envelope fold, um, you know, where you don't actually put a binding on it, but you uh, pull everything out. You put it all together inside out and then pull it all out to the right sides and then top stitch all the way around. And yeah, I kind of stretched the fabric on this one, as you can see. Now, part of this is accentuated by or exaggerated by the way I took this picture. But um, nevertheless, it's still, yeah, not the greatest in the world. Um, I tried to do this very stylized maple leaf in the center and uh, made up of half square triangles. Um, yeah, it sort of looks like a maple leaf, but it's not that great. Uh, it might have helped if I'd put a stem on it. Didn't do that. Um, and then I did some quilting on here. And of course, this was long before I ever got my... Uh, long arm so you can see i just did straight arm and i tried to do sort of the veins and a maple leaf on here at least that was my intent and um i'm not really sure yeah i did some more down in here and that didn't work out so well it was actually i think i was using my rulers a straight ruler for this and i don't think i put any kind of quilting in the borders doesn't look like it. this picture is not very good so overall, this one was a mess, and I'm surprised that I kept going with it. Um, in real life, it doesn't look quite as bad as it does in this photograph, but it's still not one of my proud um, creations. Now, why am I showing it to you then if I hate it? Well, I'm just trying to point out what I did uh, that to avoid... Um, any problems you might have with designing your own table runner or whatever you want to design. First thing I would suggest is um, I was using the envelope fold kind of technique for uh, a no bind um, finish. Uh, I've abandoned that. I find that when you do it that way, you have to be very careful. You can stretch the fabric and then you're going to get something wonky like this. Better off to put the time in doing a regular binding, I feel, so your quilt will stay square and lay flat. Um, also, plan a little better. Um, I know a lot of people enjoy doing improv quilting, and I do as well, but sometimes that doesn't work out. Um, as you can see, as I said, things are uh, irregular and uneven. And the symmetry does not really flow in this quilt as it should. I was not very careful in the colors that I picked and the placement of them. You see down in here, this looks almost like there's a gap in this particular section. Um, this looks uneven as well. So these are all things I won't, won't do again. I've learned my lesson. And that's why I'm showing this quilt to you. Because you know, on this channel... I don't only show you my successes, but I also show you my failures. And this, as far as I'm concerned, is a failure. The only saving grace is what I learned from it. And that takes us to the online quilting store of the week. And this one is called Pastime Pieces. This week's quilt store online is called Pastime Pieces. And this is located somewhere in Ontario in a place called, let's just check it out on their contact list, Blenheim, Ontario, which I'm not really sure where Blenheim, Ontario is, but I think it might be in around the Ottawa area. Let's just see if I go out on their map, how far out I can go. That might give me a clue. I'm still not getting any idea. Oh, no, I'm I'm completely wrong. It's on the other side of the province. It's uh, on the shores of Lake Erie by the looks of things. Uh, 
past Port Stanley on your way to um, Windsor, I would say. Yeah, there's Windsor. Uh, that's Detroit. But uh, yeah, so um, basically, yeah, it's quite a ways from me. So let's go back to their homepage and see what they have to offer us. And we're moving to that. There we go. So they do have a um, brick and mortar store by the looks of things. And they have a little slideshow of various things that they have created. Well, those are kind of cute. Isn't that interesting? I've never seen anything quite like that before. And some pillows and wall hangings. Okay, so let's go down. They have a newsletter. Um, they have what's new section. So there's various things there or what's happening. They have classes. They have events. They have digital downloads. That's nice. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the digital downloads. I'm assuming that they are patterns. And see what they have to pick from. Uh, featured products, Peekaboo Panda. Well, is that all they have? By the looks of things, that's all they've got for digital downloads. So we don't really have a heck of a lot there to choose from. Uh, let's go back to their homepage again. And we'll just go down a bit further. And... Uh, they have their contact information and how to get to them. Uh, that looks like that's probably their storefront. And it's cute. It's definitely cute. It looks like it's out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, that's fine too. Might be worth a little drive. Let's check out their events. Since they have it here and see what kind of thing they have. They have a mystery trip. Four quilt shops, including pastime pieces. Saturday, April the 6th, 2019. Well, that was the last time they had that. That was just as covid was getting started um 60 dollars. you got a bag lunch included prizes and games well that might be fun so that's something a, a little different and it's a bus tour of course you have to travel out there from where i am to get to it um and they have a blade saber thread cutter and they have a kit okay so and classes. Let's check out their classes. Now, I wonder if they're doing them in person right now or... Well, no, they're not doing anything right now. Okay, no classes. Okay, so far, I'm not totally impressed with this um, company because they don't have, don't have a lot of things on here so far. But that was just their homepage. Let's go to their shopping page, Shop Online. Maybe this will show us a, a greater variety. Okay, on the left side, product categories, batting books, crafts, digital download patterns. We already checked that out. They only had one. Fabric gifts, hangers and stands, interfacing and stabilizers, kits, notions, cross-stitch patterns, clearance, and quilt samples for sale. Okay, let's get right into their fabric. Click on fabric, and let's see what they have to choose from here. Now, apparently they have 1,480 different patterns to, or uh, fabrics to choose from. They have Christmas, Winter, Cuddle, Diamond, Textiles, Flannel, Kona, Lori Holt, Mermaids and Unicorns, Novelty Panels, Precuts, Stag and Thistle, Northcott. Okay, a whole lot of things here. So let's check out, um, well, they don't have Northcott. Hmm, surprised at that. All right, well, let's check out their Christmas and see what they have to offer here since we're into that season now. Uh, let's see. First snowfall. This one I have. Um, I'm not seeing anything really new here. I have seen most of these patterns before in Christmas. There might be some here that are a little newer. They have three pages of these, and it looks like they're charging $18 for these fabrics. Again, I have seen most of these fabrics in past years. So, yeah, I'm not really thrilled by their selection in their Christmas fabrics, only because 
Uh, most of it looks like stuff I have seen before. So it's not really thrilling me. $18, though. I'm assuming that's $18 a meter. But let's see if they're a meter or in yards. Oh, they're in yards. Okay. Another Canadian company that's selling it by the yards, not meters. Well, okay. Let's go back to their selections. Um, I saw that they had pre-cuts. Let's check out their pre-cuts and see. Uh, I suppose I should check out um, some of the regular fabrics as well, just for the price, because uh, I have a feeling, yeah, it looks like... No, that's Christmas and winter I'm in right now. Okay, all categories. Let's get back out here. Fabric. Let's see. Let's see if their prices are all about the same. Um, let's pick one that's like a Lori Holt, okay? Very popular uh, fabric line. 16 for one of them, 18. 18. It looks like the standard price here is $18 per yard. Okay, now I do want to check out their pre-cuts to see what kind of selection they have there. I may have gone to the wrong section here. Let's just see. Uh, Pre-cuts. Here we go. Oh, they do have some Northcott. Stag and Thistle. Uh, paint box. Maywood Studios. Charm packs. Fat quarters. Mm, prices look about standard for those. Uh, selection not my cup of tea and the colors that they're carrying in all of these um, a lot of pastel -y kind of colors um, but I'm sure that for other people that's perfectly all, all right yeah not really thrilling me in terms of selection um, but you know that's just me uh, let's go back and check out a couple of more things here um, they do have crafts. What do they mean by crafts? That looks like a uh, hand embroidery. I ah, can do dish towels. That's nice. And they have vinyl mesh. Okay. Um, tea towel fabric. Tree tray. Cardinal frame kit. Hand embroidery. More mesh. Um fork more kitchen towels well if you want to make a kitchen towel okay they've got lots to choose from um hexagon papers let's see what's on their next page dish towel i don't know that's at the top uh miler okay that's interesting because you can do some interesting things with miler um when you're doing some embroidery i just saw a video the other day where they're using it as backing for freestanding lace uh christmas tree ornaments which i think would be kind of cool lots and lots of mesh so if you want some mesh fabric this is the place to go but really again i'm finding their selection a little on the scant side uh let's just try one more category here they have books um gifts interfacing stabilizers yeah kits patterns cross stitch notions let's check out their notions see what we have here Okay, so they've got buttons, hardware, needles, threads, rulers, zippers, trims. Okay. Um, looks like the way this is set up, uh, you can either go to a category or see all the categories if you uh, pull your cursor down a little further. They do have threads. Let's check. It looks like they probably have Aurifil, at least by that picture that looks like Aurifil. Um, so they have pearl cotton, embroidery threads. Okay, I could be wrong. About, seems like they have a lot of embroidery threads. Oh, here we go. They have Guterman. Well, they do have Aurifil. And yeah, prices are about standard for those. Oh, they have some Glide as well. Okay, so I think that their selection, and here it is on the side. They have Wonderfill, DMC. I don't know what YLI is. It's probably a type of embroidery thread, maybe. Um, yeah, 
think they have an okay selection on that. Now, they do have quilts for sale, it says. So let's take a look and see. These are probably store samples. Oh, page not found. Okay, I guess they don't have any quilts on sale. I don't know how new this shop is, but I'm getting a feeling here that they may be relatively new. Although in 2019, they existed because they were having a little event going on. So they're not that new. They just don't seem to have a very well populated site. Um, about us. I'm curious. Uh, hi, I'm Marilyn Waimenja, and I live and own a quilt shop in a small town. Yeah, yeah. I've worked as a dental hygienist for almost 30 years. After dentist, I was working for 26 years, decided to retire and sell the practice, and then she went into quilting. Okay. She started in the basement of her home, opened up more space than the main floor of her house, and then she built the barn. Okay. Yeah, okay. If this is definitely a mom and pop site, which is great. Fine. I'm I'm all for supporting those. But I have to say that for me, if I was to go to this store physically, it would be about a five hour drive. And personally, I don't think it's worth the drive for me. But if you're closer into that area or whatever, then it might be worth checking out. Um so that's pastime pieces. And so that takes me to the end of this episode of The Idiot Quilter. Uh, just a reminder, again, tomorrow, November the 3rd, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Craft and Chat. Check the link below uh, for the Zoom link, and I hope to see you there uh, if you can make it. So anyways, have a great week. I hope you're creating something great and creative. It is November. Time to start on those Christmas presents if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.